full tear down on this unit like anything mechanical it's nuts bolts screws clips washers whatever you name it doesn't come apart use a little bit of force if it still doesn't come apart you're probably missing something so let's go ahead and grab some tools and start tearing into it got the trusty milwaukee gun <laughs> next step here is going to be the three drop holder on the end pull the axle tube off and then we'll get inside there. All right, so we've assembled a two jaw puller here with double plates because I don't have a long enough one, but this should do. So we're gonna hook it onto here. We're gonna go ahead and put the gun on it and pull this thing off. There is a snap ring in there, right in there. You can see it, so it's holding the axle in. Very interesting the way these swing axle cars work. There is no universal joint. These are a solid axle rear with a taper cut into the end of the axle bar. So when there's fulcrum plates that are basically a half moon on either side of the shaft, and that allows it the ability to move up and down and then also left and right. Albeit not to the same degree as an IRS, as a uh, universal joint would, but this does allow enough movement for the suspension to articulate and still uh, remain in contact. So it's very interesting the way they design this. Very cool. And uh, it's a lot stronger for drag racing because it is a strong, solid shaft. Let's go ahead. We'll grab the snap ring pliers. We'll remove that snap ring. We'll pull the shaft out. Let's repeat the same thing on the other side. <laughs> Some damage to this guy, let me tell you. So we're probably gonna have to weld and repair this. These are cooked. Severely pitted. So this transmission has probably run low on oil. So these side gears, they interface with the small spider gears inside the differential. So you have your left side gear, you have your right side gear, and then you have your spider gears inside as well. And so these right inside the side gears, I might have to buy new side gears now. You know what, let's grab the impact gun, flip the transmission around and yank the other side. plates are in great shape the axle shaft itself very good as well now we're gonna go ahead and take the side cover bolts off This is the side gear here. Here we are. So we can see this hot spot right here that's almost worn through. That created a high spot so it wasn't able to slide out. Here's our differential. Here's our case. The splines that come off the clutch come through the top here. This is the input shaft. And then that carries on inside the case. And then the output shaft, the pinion is here. And so the pinion rides on the ring gear and that's how that works there. So let's continue on with our disassembly. All right, so I did get the clutch lever or the clutch arm off. It has four splines underneath, and so I had to use the little puller, and we had to pull that off. There was a snap ring on the end. I've also taken the snap ring on the inside, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the shaft completely. 
so here's that so it was a matter of just wiggling it in and out and then the uh, the shaft came out through the inside of the case and so there's a brass bushing here right and there's a snap ring on the inside that locks that in to the end of the case and then on the outside of the case you have the arm you have the snap ring you have the spring and that's the system there and then there's a throw bearing that rides on the guide tube which is here i already removed that right cool so that stuff's all taken apart there's also a little bolt here right that sits into the hole on the bushing to ensure that the bushing doesn't spin in the case so super simple setup we'll set all that stuff aside and then we're gonna have to buy all new hardware for it of course especially the new spring because that was cracked there's also this shield that rides over there inside the spring we're going to go ahead and start taking apart the tail housing and go ahead and rip out all these bolts <laughs> Send that off and here i removed the small gear there's a snap ring on top and then all i did was use a pry bar slightly and just pry underneath it as i spun the shaft and she did come off so here on this one i took the snap ring off you can see i slid it up the shaft it's up here and this is actually quite interesting so this is the input shaft power comes in from the clutch here right spins these splines okay and then in here this gear that meshes with this one if you slide this up, and there are two separate shafts that are butted up against each other, and this splined uh, gear acts as a sleeve. This is the input shaft of the transmission. It's actually threaded, and so the uh, screw on, it screws on, becomes one shaft that way, right? So once it's tight, you can see it spins together, and then this slides over and engages the splines between the two. And it connects both shafts together. Very interesting. The nut on the inside of it is peened into the bearing race. So we're going to have to come in with a chisel, knock the peen portion out, and we're just going to hit the nut on an angle. There's a special tool for this. I unfortunately don't have it. So we went ahead. We took the pinion nut, as they call it. So here's the nut. You can see it's threaded there where it's been knocked into the pinion. And then I just stuck it in there. And then I used the hammer and I hit it on the edge. And so I was able to pull away the uh, material that had been pushed into the bearing race that was locking it. You could see the divot in here and use the drift and then spin the nut out. A spot here that I can hit this with a hammer. So we're going to go ahead and start separating the rear end of the case. I got the whole thing disassembled. So it turns out what was holding me back was the fact that this is press fit into the case. So this outer race of this bearing. And uh, I had to use the hammer, this guy, in close proximity. So just inside where the differential was and just hitting the pinion. So just light taps. I put a rag over it just to prevent any chipping of the gear. And I was trying to hit it as square as possible. So I just knocked that in there. And then eventually the whole rear housing came off with all the gears attached, of course. But that's it for disassembly. We will clean up the case. We're going to order some parts. And we'll come back to you guys with the reassembly of this in part two. Cheers guys.